Hey, it's Eric Byler for TYT Politics and TYT Network. You're looking at Congressman Judy Chu, who is a surrogate for the Clinton Kane campaign. Um, we're up next to talk to her, but I'm going to let you listen to the tail end of her interview with Dragon TV, I think is must be a, a Chinese uh, news network. Women or whether it's disabled people. So what do you think that Chinese Americans should take into consideration for making their final decision about who to vote for? It's so important that they vote for somebody who will listen to them, who will include all people. Because you know what? The United States is a country of different ethnicities. And we are strong because we are diverse. But this only works if we have a country that welcomes everybody and makes sure that everybody uh, can be productive. We know that we've had so many new immigrants that have come to the United States and done so well, become great successes. And uh, there are people like uh, uh, Jerry Yang who came and, and, and invented Yahoo. Or Steve Shen who came and, and, and invented YouTube. And look at how they've contributed to this country. I think we should be proud of the Chinese people who come here and what they've done. So in, being inclusive is essential to having a great America. And it is Hillary that is inclusive that will make sure that everybody feels like they belong to this country. So if uh, Mr. Hillary Clinton is elected, do you think she will work with China in terms of trade and in terms of like business development? Oh, most certainly. Uh, she wants to make sure that we have good trade deals, um, and uh, uh, that means that we have ha we need to have negotiations um, that I think uh, need to be done on an as-needed basis. Uh, I also uh, agree with her that that the Trans-Pacific Partnership is is too big of a deal that that uh, has some flaws in it, some very very serious flaws in it. Uh, but certainly on a case-by-case -case basis with different countries, we should have these kinds of productive negotiations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Eric Byler with the Young Turks. Oh. So what did you think of the debate today? I thought that Hillary Clinton had her strongest performance yet. She clearly laid out her vision for what would help Americans. Uh, especially in the area of jobs. She talked about having an investment in the infrastructure and in new technologies. She also talked about making college affordable uh, and she talked about preserving Social Security. These are the things that Americans care about. And she contrasted her record with that of Donald Trump, her 30 years of working for the people versus Donald Trump's basically working for himself. And, of course, the most stunning thing was the fact that Donald Trump revealed tonight that he would not abide by the results of the election. Well, let's come back to that. But I wanted to ask you about infrastructure. Um, Mr. Trump has said also that he wants to um, rebuild our roads and bridges. Um, why haven't we done You've been in Congress. Why haven't we done that over the last eight years? Because you would actually have to put money into the budget for infrastructure. You know, we had a fight over just renewing the highway transportation bill. I felt that we should have a long-term transportation bill. In the past, we've had it for six years at a time because if you're going to build roads and highways, you have to plan way ahead of time. But instead, what the Republicans were doing in Congress was just extending it for a few months at a time. This was wrong. And so, just to go through as much grief as we did to have a highway transportation bill shows you what challenges we have in a larger infrastructure bill. Well, couldn't you make the argument though that Republicans didn't want infrastructure because that would create jobs and help rebuild the economy under Obama, but they might be willing to allow infrastructure under President Trump? Um, I think that they have uh, a basic problem with uh, putting money into uh, something like the infrastructure. Uh, and in fact, there is a very strong contingent of Tea Party folks who actually refuse to put money um, into th such things because they feel like the federal government should not be uh, putting up the expense for this. They don't see the long-term vision, uh, the fact that this would actually create jobs. 
Yeah, so this sort of anti-federal government thing, it stems all the way back to defense of slavery, uh, defense of Jim Crow laws. Um, you're an Asian American. Asian Americans were a big part of fighting for the civil rights that we've earned up to this point and have to protect. So does it... You, you mentioned that Donald Trump says that he might not accept the outcome of the election. We've seen that before, and it, and it really, you know, more Americans died in the Civil War than any of the wars that we've fought since. Um, what, what, what does it say to you that we might be looking at, you know, a few months from now, um, you know, the states that voted for Trump not accepting the outcome for, of the election? I'm very concerned about this because we need to come together as a country. We're already uh, very polarized because of this election. Uh, but the one thing that we should be doing is after the election, uh, we should come together and work on things that will help move our country forward, that will help those who need the jobs, that will help those who are in the greatest pain. And so um, it would only hurt people to continue this divisiveness. Well, let's say that uh, Hillary is elected and you, you guys take this, the Democrats take the Senate. But Paul Ryan is still the Speaker of the House. Do you think that the Hastert rule is going to continue to uh, basically limit what a federal government can do? In other words, you can only pass bills that the Republicans would, would uh, vote for? Well, you know what? One thing's for sure. The uh, number of Democrats is going to increase in the House. And what that will mean is that Paul Ryan will have to rely on uh, Democrats to pass certain bills. Because there are so many Tea Party folks uh, on his side, they will not vote for even a basic budget bill. And he would have to rely on Democrats to make up for those votes, which means that he will have to deal with us. He will have to compromise to a certain extent. So we might get some infrastructure spending, we might get comprehensive immigration reform? We might, that's right. Actually, you know what, on comprehensive immigration reform, there were about 30 Republicans who wanted to vote for it. And there were 200 Democrats, you need 218 to pass a bill. Okay. If Paul Ryan needs our votes for something else, then he may be willing to compromise on some of these things. And if he can deal with those Tea Party Republicans, um, then maybe there would be more of an openness. I want to share with you experience of the last couple of days in Utah. We've been talking to Mormons um, and other people who are actually influenced by Mormon culture but aren't Mormon. And, and the way they respond to Donald Trump uh, from a standpoint of morality and propriety, it really sounds very genuine. Uh, a lot of them uh, plan to vote for uh, Evan McMullen instead. Um, I wanted to give you a chance to respond to this, this horrible video from Access Hollywood um, as a woman. Uh, how, how did you feel when you saw it and how do you feel the country is responding to it? I was sickened by what I heard on Access Hollywood and as a woman I was um, I was shaken to my core actually um, to think that a presidential candidate uh, sees women in such a degrading manner I I think that there are many men who don't believe this. Many men. Yeah, and I don't think that they think that somebody should be grabbed uh, and and uh, that they are there for the taking. So uh, it, it, is, it is offensive to many, many uh, Americans out there. Um, you think it's possible that there could be a silver lining that maybe men will start to say, okay, I don't want to be like that guy and, and start to behave better? Well, I'm glad that there's been a dialogue in this country and uh, that uh, uh, people are indeed looking at, at uh, how women are being treated. Uh, now it's become uh, part of the national dialogue. One last thing. Oh, you got to go? Yeah, okay. Thank you, Congressman Judy.